In this third and final lecture over MO theory, we'll talk about the heteronuclear diatomics, resonance, and conclude with several summary slides. Let's begin. A heteronuclear diatomic molecule means that we're making covalent bonds between two different elements. Here I've listed nitrogen monoxide, molecular oxygen, and carbon monoxide for examples. Note that both NO and CO use the pi, sigma, pi star, sigma star ordering of molecular orbitals just like the early homonuclear diatomic molecules. You won't be expected to predict this for the heteronuclear diatomics. Rather, we want you to be able to fill in the electrons given the molecular orbital diagram. Let's take a closer look at the NO molecule. I've taken this image directly from your sapling homework where it shows this pi, sigma, pi star, sigma star ordering. However, we see that order reversed here in this image. If the publisher can't settle on the proper structure, then I'm certainly not going to hold you to knowing that information either. Either way, the Lewis structure of NO predicts a radical unpaired electron since oxygen brings in six valence electrons and nitrogen brings in five. Regardless of which version of the MO diagram you use, you'll find that molecular orbital theory agrees with the Lewis prediction. Sometimes we'll see hydrogen bonding with a second period element, such as when we make a bond between hydrogen and fluorine. From our valence bond theory work, we know the hydrogen 1s orbital will sigma bond to the 2px orbital of fluorine. What does this mean for the other fluorine atomic orbitals? The fluorine electrons in the 2py and 2pz atomic orbitals remain unshared and maintain their atomic orbital energy levels. These non-bonding orbitals in the MO diagram do not contribute to the bonding and are not included in the bond order calculations. In fact, if we were to zoom out and consider the complete MO diagram for HF, we'd see the 2s atomic orbital on fluorine is also non-bonding. Let's switch gears and talk briefly about resonance. Recall that resonance occurs when multiple equivalent Lewis structures can be drawn for a molecule, where the resonance structures differ only in the location of the multiple bonds and the lone pairs of electrons. MO theory describes resonance as the delocalization of the pi bond between adjacent atoms. So in the case of ozone, one bonding MO encompasses all three oxygen atoms, and both oxygen-oxygen bonds are the same length. Compounds with resonance are generally less reactive than expected based on the number of multiple bonds. We see that MO theory works for larger molecules with resonance too. For example, benzene is generally drawn as a hexagon with three double bonds. MO theory describes those pi bonds as being shared or delocalized over all six carbon atoms resulting in carbon-carbon bonds that are all the same length, just as predicted by Lewis theory. These delocalized double bonds being shared over the entire benzene ring explain why benzene is far less reactive than typical double bond containing hydrocarbons. This concludes the new material for MO theory. What follows are four slides that summarize and compare the bonding theories we've discussed so far followed by the parting thoughts of the authors for section 11.5 over MO theory. Please pause each slide and take notes as needed.